In this tutorial I will teach you how to prepare a lower third like this from start to finish. Let us preview our end result and then start working. I start with a new composition, HD size 30 frames per second, 10 seconds long. I click OK and I can start working. Now for this kind of work where we need some precision, I would suggest you open up the grid so it will be easier to draw the actual lower third. I will come a bit closer with my scroll wheel and I can start working. I will select the shape and I will try to create the first part of our lower third. This size should be okay, let me preview it a bit. Alright, it's good enough and I will deselect the shape layer 1 and create another shape. Once I have my two shapes prepared, I should select a color for them. I was searching a bit around in Adobe Color until I found this, so I will work with those colors. I have two monitors, so I switch it back on the right side and I will simply pick with the colors. Now I want to select my first rectangle up in the layers panel, click on fill, click on the pick whip and select the proper color. I will go for this bright one and for the second shape layer I select the rectangle, I select the fill again and choose a darker color. I will quickly rename my layers so they don't get messed up. I select bottom and this will be the upper. I place it as the first so I don't get confused. If you want to remain with those rectangles that's no problem. If you however would like to change those shapes you could do so with the pen tool. I select the pen tool and I have to make one adjustment to those layers. They are rectangles and they have a rectangle pad with some options. I would like however to change the pad inside of here. So I select the rectangle, I right click on it and I convert it to Bezier pad. This gets rid of any options but the shape is now a pad. Now I can adjust it a little bit by adding a point here and deleting the point. This is something I wanted to achieve. I'll do the same for the second rectangle. I go inside the rectangle, right click on the rectangle pad, convert it. Now I can select the pad select the pen tool and I can edit or add new points. I'll add one point here and one point maybe here. I delete the remaining points and this looks good enough. I think we are prepared to add the text. Now an important notice in Adobe After Effects CS6 you can't convert them to Bezier pads. Once you are drawing a rectangle you need to hold the left alt or option key. Once you are holding the left alt or option key it will automatically create a pad instead of a shape. So you can see the first rectangle is the rectangle pad with its options and the second rectangle is only a pad where I could edit the points. So remember on After Effects CS6 you need to hold the left alt. In Adobe After Effects CC you can simply right click and convert it to Bezier pad. Before I add the text I would also like to animate those two rectangles. So I select the upper I see the anchor point is up here. So I press Y on my keyboard and I place the anchor point here on the left side because I want those to scale up from left to right. They will be invisible and they will pop out from the left side. I will select the bottom one and by having the pen behind tool selected I place this anchor point also here. Now I can select both of them. Let me close everything down, it will be better visible and I press on the scale. I want to also work on the X axis of the scale, not on the Y axis. This is why I unlink the constraint proportions and I'll work with the first scale. I see I have a little mistake here. Let me go once again to the bottom. Somehow I messed up with the anchor point, but that's no problem. Now I can work with the first left scale. I select both layers and I press 0%. I place keyframes here. And I want to go two seconds forward. I see I've made another mistake. This composition is too small. So I press Ctrl K and instead of having only 10 frames, I want to make it 10 seconds, of course. Sorry for this little mistake. I select OK. I make it bigger. I should also extend the layers to 10 seconds. Now it's OK. I'll place the keyframes on two seconds and on two seconds it should be 100%. To make this animation one second long, I place it on the first second. I press one page down 
I select the keyframes and I press shift so they snap exactly to the first second. Now this is how the animation from left to right will be looking. I select all keyframes, I go to my keyframe assistant and I easy ease them. Ok, now I can add the text. I select the text right away and place the first text calling my name. And perhaps I should change the font because this looks like from Downtown Abbey and not like the lower third style I'm going for. So let me select the font. The font is selected, I will not search too long and I duplicate the text and place the bottom text here. Both my text layers are prepared but I want the text layers to fade in together with those rectangles. How can I achieve this? The easiest possible way will be using track mats. I select the upper and bottom layers. I duplicate it by clicking on Ctrl or Command D. Now I take the upper under the first text and I take the bottom under the second text. I need to select both of those objects and set them to alpha mat and the text. I should also select the fill color and select the color I wanted for the text. It was something bright like this or right. Now this is the animation that we have until now. You see this upper and bottom? I just duplicate them to create another color. Now I go to the fill options, I should do this separately, so I select the upper, I choose the fill and I get a bit darker. Now here I get also a little bit darker from the previous color. I select both layers, I press my left alt key or option key and I will press page up three times. So it moves left three frames. So at first the darker layers will start to appear and then the original layers. You can do this as many times as you want and with any colors as you want. I'll do this one last time, Control D, select the upper, select again a darker color because I would like to stay in the same color range, go to the bottom, select the fill once again, lower down the brightness like that, ok. I forgot to place them a few frames back, left alt, page up, page up, page up, three times and depending on what change do you want here you place them that many frames back. Ok, this is the animation we have prepared here. Looks pretty decent, now I select everything and press Ctrl or Command Shift C to pre-compose everything. This will be my lower third animation and this animation on the timeline appears and I have 10 seconds to work with. I would like it to fade in and fade off, so I take my playhead until it appears I should cut it somewhere around here, so I select this layer, I hit my ALT or OPTION button and I press the right bracket key. This will cut down this layer in this place. Now I duplicate this layer by hitting CTRL D, I place it on the bottom, I can even rename it to lower third fade off and I right click, time, time reverse layer. Now I place this layer here and my animation is finished. Let's preview the effect. It fades in, it introduces and it fades off. Now if you want to make it longer, that's absolutely no problem. Just drag this layer out, take this first composition, make it longer because the composition itself is about 10 seconds long so we have that much time to work with. I can now go back to comp1 and preview what I have achieved. The animation is flying in, it stays on the screen as long as I wanted it to be and here it will start to fade off. This is how you can work and create lower thirds. Now I would need to add it to the render queue and of course render it with transparent settings. So if you remember, before you render, select QuickTime and set RGB plus alpha. Select also a codec and animation quality, OK, render and it's ready to put over any video.